Right. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello, English readers. Hello, hello. I'm so glad to be back. It's been a while. So welcome to episode 20 of the podcast Read in English. I'm Lydie Bureau and I'm an English teacher in France. I'm also the founder of Lydie's Book Club, in which I host live readings of adaptations of classics or contemporary novels. of English literature. Once a week, I meet the members of the book club via Zoom to discuss the chapters or the sections read uh, over the week. And we also talk about books in general and um, learning English and uh, um, also other daily conversation. And today, um, I'm very excited to talk to you about Charlotte Bronte, She is a famous uh, British uh, writer and her widely known novel, Jane Eyre, published in 1849. So this is a Penguin Classics uh, close bound edition and it is huge, as you can see. Uh, there, there are about 500 pages. This is the original novel. And I've decided to uh, do a podcast about Charlotte Bronte, as you can imagine, because I'm going to read next week Jane Eyre, the adaptation of Jane Eyre into um, a graded reader um, book and uh, it will start next week but I will talk more about this at the end of the podcast. So Charlotte Bronte was born in 1816 at Thornton in Yorkshire, this is uh, in the north of England, and was the third child of out of the six Bronte children. She had two eldest sisters, Maria and Elizabeth, and after the birth of Charlotte came Patrick, Patrick Ban Branwell, Emily and Anne. Unfortunately, a year after the birth of Anne, Charlotte's mother died and Charlotte was only five years old. So three years after that, the death of, of the death of the death sorry of her mother she lost also her two sisters maria and elizabeth the two eldest died at 10 and 11 years old after contracting tuberculosis at school so the two sisters were set were sent to a boarding school a girls boarding school where they suffered from terrible conditions They were often cold and hungry. Charlotte and Emily also went to this school, but soon after the death of their sisters, um, their parents um, decided, or oh, at least their father, decided to remove them. So we can see that Charlotte experienced death at a very early age. She was only five when her mother died and eight years old when Her sisters died. So we can understand why death is very present in her novels and also in the novels of, of her sisters, Emily and Anne, and how she got inspired in created Lowood in Jane Eyre. Um, this is the boarding school where Jane was sent to. And Um, she describes also very hard um, living conditions in this girls' school. Mainly, it um, uh, it was mainly a, an issue in girls' boarding school at the time. So Charlotte's first published work was a collection of poems in 1846, which she wrote with her two sisters, Emily and Anne, named Poems by, simply Poems, uh, by Kerr, Ellis and Acton Bell. So as you noticed, at first they did not publish their work under their real names, but 
used male pen names. So cur or let's say gender ambiguous uh, names. So cur stood for Charlotte, Ellis for Emily, and Acton for Anne. So this way, their initials would remain the same as their real names. So it will be then um, CB, EB, and AB, because their last name was Bell and not Bronte. As you can imagine, in the 19th century, women writers suffered from what we call the double standard, meaning that they were not taken seriously as their male counterparts. So that's why they chose male pseudonyms. Unfortunately, their first publication was a complete failure. They only sold two copies, but soon after this sad experience, they found success with their first novel. So a year later, in October 1847, Jane Eyre was published and it was an immediate success. And only two months after that, after the publication of Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights from, uh, by Emily and Agnes Gray by Anne were published together as one book. So this way they surfed on Jane Eyre's success. Unfortunately, here again, Emily and Anne did not get the chance to appreciate the success of their novels as they both died of tuberculosis the following year. So Emily died in December 1848 and Anne in May 1849. And on top of this, their only brother, Patrick Branwell, had also died three months before Emily. So once again, Charlotte was hit by death in the space of nine months. She lost her beloved sisters and her brother. So out of the six Bronte siblings, Charlotte was the only surviving child in 1849. Nevertheless, Charlotte continued her writing career with the publication of Shirley the same year and Villet in uh, 1853. A year later, she eventually married Arthur Bell Nichols. Unfortunately, this marriage did not last long as Charlotte died in 1855 in the early stages of her pregnancy. And she was only 38 years old. So, however, Charlotte's writing legacy did not stop there. Her first novel, The Professor, which was initially rejected in 1847, got finally published 10 years later in 1857, along with the publication of Charlotte's, Bronte, Charlotte's uh, biography, sorry, uh, The Life of Charlotte Bronte, written by her dear friend, Elizabeth Gatskill, which is the author of North and South. So Charlotte's life fluctuated from literary success to personal tragedies, and the success of Jane Eyre was the starting point of her first recognition as a writer. When her publisher, George Smith, her first publisher, John, uh, George Smith, received the manuscript of Jane Eyre, he wrote, The story quickly took me captive. Before 12 o'clock, my horse came to the door, but I could not put the book down. So this is a quote uh, from the introduction of the Penguin, Reader, the Penguin Classics edition from 2008, so this edition that I just showed you. So when Jane Eyre was first published, it was initially titled Jane Eyre, an autobiography, edited by Curbel. Remember, Curbel was her pen name. So here, in choosing to call it an autobiography, Charlotte wants to create the illusion of a connection with her readers 
And by the use of the first person narrative, she wants them to feel deeply connected to her main character, Jane Eyre. So this novel is actually the personal recollection of Jane's childhood and early life as a young woman. She tells her story, but it is not the autobiography of the author. It is the autobiography of her character. So this was actually a very good marketing strategy for the time. So Jane Eyre is also called a book of books, as we can find many allusions to ballads and folk stories, popular novels. Um, she also quotes the Bible from... Um, you also have quotes from Bewick's History of English Birds. Uh, the book is mentioned when Jane recollects her childhood. Uh, to Sir Walter Scott's poems, as well as his novels, uh, which uh, inspired a lot Charlotte Bronte. At the time, the critics received the novel as a feminist manifesto when married women didn't have any experience under the law, existence, sorry. Many women didn't have any existence under the law. Remember, at the time, they could not own properties. They didn't have the right to divorce. They didn't have the right to vote or go to university. So this novel actually laid the foundation of the feminist movement that emerged at the beginning of the 20th century. So this novel, this novel is groundbreaking in that sense, in my personal view. In this novel, Charlotte explored the themes of child abuse inspired by her own experience of the girls' boarding schools and their terrible conditions that I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the podcast where uh, um, her, in which her sisters caught um, tuberculosis, so hygiene was not very uh, good as well. Um, in, the, in the novel, Charlotte also explores the conditions of employment, economic relations, but also the topic of violence and rape in marriages. So very um, societal topic. And this topic of violence and rape in marriages is uh, a very modern issue and it's still relevant uh, to this day. So this is what makes this novel a classic. This is not just an epic love story. It is about the condition of women in Victorian society in the 19th century and how this young woman find, found the inner strength and rage to choose her own future. So I hope you enjoyed this um, introduction to Charlotte Bronte and her writing works and career and about Jane Eyre as well. So if you liked it, make sure that you like the video or review the podcast as well. I will see you next month with a new podcast episode dedicated to a more contemporary female writer, Zadie Smith, and her acclaimed novel, White Tea. So before I leave you, I just want to remind you that uh, from the 13th of May, so from next week until the 20th at Ladies Book Club, we're going to read the graded reader adaptation of Jane Eyre. So book that I showed you earlier by Charlotte Bronte. So it's a level A2 plus, level four, which is A2 plus or upper beginner. So make sure you subscribe to the book club membership to be part of this literary journey and improve your English through reading and conversation. I wish you a beautiful end of the day and I'll see you next week live on Instagram for the reading of the first chapter of Jane Eyre. Bye-bye. <laughs>